Hey everyone, this is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com and thank you for joining me today for Video Game Sales. It is May 13th, 2022 and in today's video we are going to go over the official NPD results from the month of April 2022 courtesy Matt Piscatella from the NPD group as he very kindly puts together these charts once a month on Twitter. Be sure to follow at Matt Piscatella on Twitter. Thank you sir for putting this up. I appreciate it as I'm sure many video game number crunching fans around the world do as well. Let's hop to it, shall we? April 2022, US NPD thread. April 2022, consumer spending across video game hardware, content, and accessories declined 8% when compared to a year ago to $4.3 billion. Hardware gains were unable to offset declines in content and accessories spending. My takeaway is the positive, first of all. Hardware gains. I like to hear that. Um, even though overall an 8% decline, the hardware side of things means that more people were buying Nintendo Switch, Xbox Series, and PlayStation 5 units than they were that same time last year. So that's a pro. That's definitely a pro. Um, let's see. What's next? Year-to-date, 2022 spending is 8% lower than the same period a year ago at $18.3 billion. Still a staggering number. The market has experienced six consecutive months of year-on-year -year declines. So, although that's not the best news, 8% is not too bad of a drop. You know, the video game industry is still trying to find its pace when it comes to chip shortages, getting enough consoles out there, the new systems being Xbox Series X, S, and PlayStation 5 really yet to find their ground. Even Nintendo with the Nintendo Switch being over five years old, still not quite being able to manufacture as many as that they would like. We saw Nintendo's recent forecast suggesting that they're anticipating to sell 21 million in the next year. That's phenomenal, but I wouldn't be surprised at that if they could pump out more, they would sell more, you know? Plus the rest of the world is starting to open up again, so what was used to be not in much of a contention of what you could do, now, okay, movie theaters are available to be attended to, theme parks, etc. So there goes your money being spent, not just on video games, which is in home. That's why, well, one of the reasons why it boomed during the pandemic, at least for a portion of it. Um, to now, yeah, that money being spread a little bit, but still solid. US NPD hardware, video game hardware dollar sales increased 16% when compared to a year ago to $343 million. Due to improved supply of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles, year to date spending on hardware fell 9% to $1.5 billion. This is one of the things I like. Matt, in addition to providing the updated figures and stats from the month that just passed, in this case April, also gives a little bit of a look at, you know, how's the quarter doing, how's the first five months, eventually six months, etc. doing. Nintendo Switch featured the highest unit sales of any hardware platform for both April and 2022 year to date. Wow. Xbox Series ranked second in units sold during both time periods. That's really impressive. Some people will say, well, the only reason why Nintendo Switch is outselling PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series is because more are being manufactured. That is true to an extent. All three companies are having a difficult time pumping out as many as they would like. Xbox and PlayStation are more impacted, but it's not like Nintendo is just making as many as they could, as they can. Uh, no. The Nintendo Switch is still a very much in-demand console that has yet to receive a full, proper, permanent price drop worldwide applied, and it still has compelling software coming out in its sixth year. So shout-outs to Nintendo for hanging in there and being the best-selling console of the month and of 2022. Will it last the whole year? I do think so. Also, props given to Xbox Series for being the second best-selling system of the month and of the first five. We're definitely seeing a stronger Xbox, and I've stated this before, but some of you might be watching for the first time, that the gap is not going to be so dramatic between PlayStation and Xbox this time around. I think 
we won't quite get as close to a generation as we did between Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 where they were truly neck and neck, but it's not going to be this big difference like we saw in PS4 and Xbox One. Xbox Series S and X, you've got both ends of the spectrum, one being arguably the most powerful console. You know, it trades off with PS5 in a couple of categories here and there. And one being, hey, if you want to just hop into the next generation of gaming from that designated home console side of things and don't mind not having discs and not having the highest visual fidelity, but be guaranteed that, hey, everything that comes out in these next seven years or whatever are going to be played on this $300 machine. And Xbox Series S isn't that bad. Plus, it looks like Microsoft is having a little bit easier of a time pumping them out, pumping them out than Sony. So, at least on the United States side of things, Xbox is, you know, gaining some ground over PlayStation for this year. Japan, other territories, is another story, but uh, pretty cool to see. This is overall a healthy market for all three. U.S. NPD hardware lifetime unit sales of Nintendo Switch have now surpassed those of PlayStation 4, making it the fourth highest unit selling console in US history and the sixth highest unit selling video game hardware platform overall. In console, it trails only PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, and Wii. That is wild, isn't it? If you're wondering what else is there because how could it be the fourth and the sixth? Well, the Game Boy and the Nintendo DS occupy other spots in those top five, which is why overall of video games, Nintendo Switch is the sixth of consoles, which the Nintendo Switch is, at the end of the day, a home console. Yes, it's also a hybrid. Yes, it's also a handheld, but it is. it was released as a home console that can do everything, right? It's the fourth. It will surpass Wii and Xbox 360 soon in the United States. It already passed them both worldwide. And then reaching PlayStation 2 is going to take a little bit more time, but I'm confident that it will eventually surpass PS2 both in the United States and worldwide. US NPD hardware. PlayStation 5 led April in hardware dollar sales trailed closely by Xbox Series and Nintendo Switch. Xbox Series has generated the highest hardware dollars of any platform year to date, followed by PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch. That's pretty cool. You see, that figure that we went over earlier with Xbox Series selling just second to Nintendo Switch, it was second to it, but it was also second to PlayStation 5's dollars generated, because PS5 has two SKUs. A $500 and a $400 machine. Xbox overall sold more Series X and S's, but those are $500 and $300 machines, which is why it was second in that category as well. But still, trailed closely by Xbox Series and Nintendo Switch means that all three systems are selling a lot, and that is awesome to see. Good growth in the industry, only held back by shortages at this point. All right, next up, US NPD Premium Games. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga was the best-selling game of April 2022, while also debuting as the number two best-selling game of 2022 year-to-date. It was the best-selling game of the month across Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam platforms. I picked up the title last month, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's a really good quality title. Um, regardless of what platform you have. If you like Star Wars, no-brainer. If you like Lego, I would say probably no-brainer. If you just want a good value, probably, once again, no-brainer because you're getting nine movies worth of stories, voice acting, cinema scenes, characters, gameplay mechanics, etc. in one piece of software. So, very worthwhile. Unless if you're just totally not a fan of Star Wars, the action genre, Legos, etc., then it's not for you. But I think this game will satisfy quite a few people out there. 
Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga achieved the highest launch month dollar sales for any Lego title in history, and after one month ranks among the top six best-selling Lego games life to date. Quite impressive. I'm seeing a lot of all-time best-selling achievements happen this generation so far, you know. Uh, things like Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Okay, fastest selling Kirby game to 2 million. 2.6 million, putting it higher than, you know, a majority of Kirby games. You know, with just a couple of weeks of availability, this new LEGO Star Wars game being one of the six best LEGO selling games of all time and the highest launch month for anyone ever. Like, uh, it's cool. Records are meant to be broken, right? Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is the first third-party game to rank as the best-selling title on Nintendo platforms since March 2021. So that's a 13-month uh, record that Monster Hunter Rise had. You know, third-party games continue to sell and sell well on Nintendo Switch. They have done so in the last 13 months, but there's nothing quite like that, for the most part, Nintendo first-party software that you know, precious IP of theirs, including Pokemon, which is co-owned. But there's nothing quite like that for dominance on the charts. They're always number one most of the time. And here we have uh, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga as number one on Nintendo Switch, a third-party game. First to do so since Monster Hunter Rise. Pretty cool. Elden Ring was the second best-selling title of April 2022. Elden Ring remains the best-selling game of 2022 year-to-date and has surpassed Call of Duty Vanguard to become the best-selling premium game of the trailing 12-month period ending April 2022. That's wild. Call of Duty Vanguard has been on here for a long time, so to have Elden Ring surpass it is definitely very impressive. Sensor Tower US Mobile. US mobile game spending growth was expected to experience a cooling down period once worries about the coronavirus waned and consumers once again had more entertainment options available to them. That's kind of something that I was expressing earlier. Money can only be spent on so many things when you have more available and more competition within itself. So you see some things go down here and there. The greater than anticipated degree of negative year-over-year -year growth comes as spending on games through Google Play takes a larger than expected hit due to inflation and the end of annual stimulus payments. True points. Despite the slowdown in spending, usage of the top earning titles remains as strong or stronger than ever, telling us that the players haven't left and could very well begin spending more judiciously once macroeconomic conditions improve. Top earning U.S. mobile games for April 2022, Candy Crush Saga, Roblox, Coin Master, Ebony, The King's Return, Royal Match, State of Survival, Zombie War, Bingo Blitz, Clash of Clans, Genshin Impact, and Call of Duty Mobile. Here's a chart that I know people like to see, myself included. Let's open it up. This is the April 2022 Top 20 Sellers. We've got at number one, Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga. Two for Elden Ring. Three, MLB The Show 22. Four, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Five, Nintendo Switch Sports, which came in at the very end of the month, only up there for two days. So that's impressive. Call of Duty Vanguard in sixth, Horizon Forbidden West in seventh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at eight, Gran Turismo 7 at ninth. In tenth place, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Eleventh goes to Minecraft, twelfth, twelfth place, FIFA 22, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War in 13th, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was the 14th best-selling game of the month, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales came in at 15, Animal Crossing New Horizon 16, WWE 2K22 at 17, Mario Party Superstars was the 18th best-selling game of the month, coming out at 19 was Madden NFL 22, and to finish it off, we've got Tiny Tina's Wonderlands in the 20th spot. A good mix of seasoned games that have been around for a while, like Smash Brothers and, at this point, Animal Crossing and Mario Kart. Mario Kart, in particular, coming in pretty strong. Some good showing of games that are 
holding on to some some power like Kirby and Elden Rings in particular. A new title taking that number one top spot, Lego. Nintendo Switch Sports coming in at five, very strong for only being available for two days on the market. It will be interesting to see that one in the month of May in which we will get those results mid-June. I'm curious because that one also has a price difference between digital and physical. And that also should be reminded that these charts, they don't include Nintendo's eShop sales. So in reality, some of these Nintendo titles here could actually be a couple of spots higher in some cases. The year to date 2022 top sellers, this is another interesting one because that was the month, this is the year so far, Elden Ring, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Horizon Forbidden West, MLB The Show 22, Gran Turismo 7, Call of Duty Vanguard, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Madden NFL 22, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, FIFA 22, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, Minecraft, Dying Light 2 Stay Human, Monster Hunter Rise, Mario Party Superstars, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, WWE 2K22, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. So a lot of the games that you saw as top selling titles of April are once again, once again here in the top 22 for the first four months of the year overall. But you know we have some titles that showed up that weren't in the month of April. Finally we'll go over this one. This is the US NPD Premium Games 12 months ending April 2020. 2022. So this goes from that 2021 April to 2022 April, or more accurately, that May 1st of 2021 through April 30th of 2022 time frame. So these last 12 months, and this is where Elden Ring uh, came out on top. Well, in, in more than one area, but referring to earlier taking the top spot from the last 12 months after Elden Ring was Call of Duty Vanguard followed by Madden NFL 22, then Pokemon Brilliant, Diamond, and Shining Pearl, Battlefield 2042 after that, Lego Star, Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, Far Cry 6, FIFA 22, Resident Evil Village, Pokemon Legends Arceus. And once again, they do highlight with that little asterisk, digital sales not included, because we know from Nintendo, for instance, but we also know from Nintendo uh, worldwide that Pokemon Legends Arceus has surpassed 12 million, right? Um, but of course they have the unique advantage of being able to track their own games digitally and completely worldwide, you know, including Japan and Europe and stuff like that. This is just United States, so it will be cool, as it always is, you know, um, February 10th-ish or so next year, 2023, to get the whole year's worth of data of how well did Nintendo Switch software sell, what are the new numbers at from Pokemon Legends Arceus and Kirby and the Forgotten Land, etc. And then finding a way to compare all of those with just how much did Elden Ring sell, just how much did Madden NFL 22 sell overall, and then compiling a list perhaps to see what were really the best global selling games of the entire calendar year of 2022. That's always fun. We could spend a little bit of time here as well. This is the April 2022 Nintendo Platform's top 10 bestsellers. Lego Star Wars, Kirby, Nintendo Switch Sports, Mario Kart 8, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Smash Brothers, Animal Crossing, Mario Party Superstars, Breath of the Wild, MLB The Show 22. Good to see. Sometimes it's good to break in this chart because you see like Breath of the Wild, for instance, still selling very well, just happened to not uh, crack the top 20 overall chart that time around. On the PlayStation top 10 bestsellers list, once again, Star Wars, Skywalker Saga, Skywalker Saga, sorry about that, MLB The Show 22, Elden Ring, Horizon 2, Gran Turismo 7, Call of Duty Vanguard, Spider-Man Miles Morales, 
WWE 2K22, FIFA 22, and Madden NFL 22. Then for the Xbox platform's top 10 bestsellers, similarly, LEGO Star Wars debuting at the top, Elden Ring, Call of Duty Vanguard, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Forza Horizon 5, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, that's the 2019 version, Halo Infinite, Godfall, FIFA 22, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. And let's see, we're coming to the end. US NPD accessories, April 2022 spending on video game accessories declined 10% when compared to a year ago to $151 million. Year to date, video game accessories spending has fallen 15% to $743 million. US NPD accessories, the PS4 DualShock 4 wireless controller Black was April's best selling accessory. The Xbox Elite Series 2 wireless controller remains the best selling accessory of 2022 year to date. It's interesting that the PS4 DualShock wireless Black version um, actually outsold the Xbox Elite Series 2 wireless controller because the latter has been number one for a long time, which makes sense why it's still the number one best-selling accessory for the whole year, but hey, it got dethroned for a month. And that's going to do it for Matt Piscatello's official report. I had something to kind of follow up on my own on Twitter, uh, using this information that Matt provided and then coming up with my own analysis in here. And that's the following, and I'll just read it off for you as I wrote it, and then maybe explain if I think I might need to elaborate. After 100 months, PlayStation 4 has sold 117 million units worldwide. Ah, typo. In 60 months, Nintendo Switch has sold 107.65 million. Nintendo Switch has been out for 60% of PS4's life, yet has sold 92% of its total thus far. That's important. The PS4 average per month over the last 100 months has been 1.17 million. The Nintendo Switch average per month over its last 60 months has been 1.79 million. If the Nintendo Switch were to continue this pace for another 40 months, then when it was 100 months old, it would be at 179.42 million units worldwide. However, This would happen as of June 30th, approximately, 2025, as that's when it would be about 100 months old. But that's not the way how things work. The pace rises as a console is gaining steam, plateaus for a couple of years, and then slowly declines. So the monthly average will naturally go down eventually. We could see some spikes on Nintendo's side of things, however, and some of those are really unknown. They're determined on a few factors. And I'm going to break that up here. Will we see a price drop? If you see a significant price drop on a really healthy Nintendo Switch before it really goes down too far, you could actually halt that decline and have another spiked year if the price, significant, if the price drop was significant. Will we get a player's choice line of reduced software? That only that not only helps software increase long run, which we're already looking at 1 billion 35,000 being sold by March 31st next year, but reduced <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> reduced software also helps would be potential Nintendo Switch console owners be more inclined to buy the console because now they're looking at it as not only is this system available for less because it's down to 70 bucks or 100 bucks but also I could get a fair amount of games for only a hundred fifty dollars without having to spend hundreds of dollars for these highly recommended titles will there be a Nintendo Switch Plus before Nintendo Switch 2 what if NS Plus comes out officially <coughs> adding more sales to NS, kind of like how Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro and the new 3DS all add to their respective systems 
lifetime sales. And then Nintendo Switch 2 comes out, and okay, that's its own thing. When Nintendo Switch 2 does come out, will there be cross-gen support for NS for a couple of years? You know, something that I think Nintendo needs to do a little bit better this time around is into Nintendo Switch 2's life for a couple of years, release high-end software that still can be played on Nintendo Switch, but experienced into much better, higher fidelity performance, etc. on Nintendo Switch 2. So if you're buying Mario Kart 9 and it comes out, you could play that cartridge, you play that download on your Nintendo Switch, you could experience it a little bit better on Nintendo Switch Plus. But if you have a Nintendo Switch 2, there's a clear difference. That way you're taking advantage of this giant install base of 140 something million, 170 million, and you have a compelling reason for the hardcore that want to hop in early and experience the best that have had the Nintendo Switch for the longest amount of time and are craving for that difference in visuals, ah, a reason to expand. And also, you're not going to be able to pump out as many Nintendo Switch 2s at launch in that first year as you would like, so you're still going to sell software to the existing fan base and people in hopes of being able to play it on their next system, buying it for that reason too, etc. You see where I'm getting at. Nintendo really has to be careful and they have a tremendous opportunity to do something that like no console has ever done before and that's reached 200 million and I'll get to that in a moment. Will Nintendo Switch 2 be backwards compatible? That actually, in my opinion, would help Nintendo sell more Nintendo Switches than not because you could make the argument of, well, could people not buy a Nintendo Switch now because they realize that, well, a Nintendo Switch 2 is a few years out. I could wait till then to buy into this ecosystem to finally play Breath of the Wild or Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, that is a potential. However, with a vibrant, successful market, more people than not would be willing to purchase a Nintendo Switch now especially one that was price reduced and software that was price reduced because they would say, okay, hold on, so I'm not just buying something that's going to be dead in a couple of years. This cartridge that I bought, I could also put it into my next system and then have some kind of better experience, a little bit improved this or that behind the scenes, maybe sell my old system, maybe I have a new kid or maybe my old kid who was younger is now older and that could be that individual system or sell it, put that money towards a new system but still keep my games, you know what I'm saying? I think Nintendo Switch 2 should be uh, backwards compatible. Some people, yeah, might not buy a base Switch now because of that reason, but more than not would actually buy a Nintendo Switch knowing that this is a healthy ecosystem that I can get into. This Nintendo Switch online or online expansion pass that I'm buying now will actually translate over into NS2. There you go. Here's an interesting fact for you. Sony price dropped the PlayStation 2 a couple of times, but by 2009 it was dropped to $100, nine years after the system came out, and that was three years into the PlayStation 3's life. What if Nintendo Switch Plus comes out in, let's say, March of 2023, and Nintendo Switch 2, significantly more powerful, eventually, with its own exclusive games that, okay, no longer can be played on Nintendo Switch, no longer Nintendo manufacturing, creating games for Nintendo Switch, just for NS2, but in 2025, that's when that system comes out. But like I said, the OG Nintendo Switch model still getting some first party support for a couple of years, 2027. Now you have a system in Nintendo Switch with 10 years of designated support by Nintendo for them. It got support from Nintendo, third parties, and indies for a decade even into that Plus model's life, because they all still worked, and even into Nintendo Switch 2's life for a couple of years, in which then, at that point, Nintendo has, you know, close to 40 million Nintendo Switch 2's out there. 
they're not necessarily going to be feeling like they're abandoning their user base or not having a good install base on the current platform enough to sell the next Pokemon, the next Mario, the next Smash Brothers, etc. because they'll have 40 million or so and then you're moving on. And then who knows, maybe Nintendo Switch 2 has a very similar uh, life, ideally, best case scenario, where they release a light model here, a plus model there, some kind of boosted version at this point, and then a third model, etc. Like, I really just think that Nintendo has an opportunity to create something uh, brilliant here. Here's a little bit of a longer ways away thought. Imagine if we get to a point where Nintendo Switch 2 is a new system on the market for 400 bucks. That previously released Nintendo Switch Plus, whatever it cost at launch, is now 300 while the NS2 is out for 4 The OLED model is 200 or perhaps it would be lower than this, like 170 or something like that, to create a bigger gap. The OG, the original Nintendo Switch model, you know, something like 120 at this point, 130 maybe. And the light for a measly 70 bucks. If you think that's too low, look at that PlayStation 2. Nine years later, it was reduced by 66.6% .6 from $300 to $100. So who's to say that the Nintendo Switch Lite can't go from its $200 down to 70? That wouldn't even be as great of a percent drop or the base Nintendo Switch even, from 300 to 100. That's exactly that PlayStation 2 scenario. So these numbers that I'm picking aren't necessarily too far-fetched. You could maybe say, like I said, lower the OLED model a little bit, increase the OG a little bit, increase the light slightly, but this kind of pricing structure seems possible. Is it overwhelming potentially to some? Perhaps. Sometimes having so many SKUs at this point you'd have NS2, NS Plus, OLED, the OG, and the Lite. Five different things on the market. You know, you, you could run into a case where someone's going into the store, perhaps a little less informed, less hardcore than you and I watching slash recording this, and like, I want the new Nintendo Switch. What is it? Well, we don't have the Nintendo Switch 2. You want the Plus or do you want the OLED model? It's a lot less because they're sold out of the 2. Yeah, okay, fine, I'll just get that. You have that. Is that a return? Is that just a, a buy and deal with? Mm, you know, there, there could be a little bit of a confusion, but maybe not. You know, Nintendo distinctly packages them, marks them differently, you know, has a nice label of what does this one do or not. You don't want to overcomplicate it, like how sometimes video game companies have one game and there's like the regular version, the deluxe, the supreme, the digital, the, the physical, the ultra, and it's got this massive chart of complexity. You don't want that. And I'm not saying this would be that, but I think Nintendo could find a way how to make it still have a few systems out there and make them distinct and clear and affordable depending while having a player's choice line, etc. It's potentially brilliant. Meanwhile, one to two first party and potentially third party Nintendo Switch games are permanently reduced to 20 or $30. This has been quite the uh, generation for Nintendo because they haven't needed to reduce the price of the Nintendo Switch yet on a worldwide level or create a long term, you know, permanent, I should say, uh, first party or third party partnership player's choice line. But they get to 20 or 30 bucks. I could see that really boosting Nintendo Switch sales themselves and, of course, the software. Assuming Nintendo keeps the production lines open and nails all of the above, this is why I've always said that the console can be a 210 million seller, and I still stand by that. But you gotta think, well, that the production line thing, right? Would Nintendo want to hold it open? they could be using those lines potentially for Nintendo Switch 2 then again it comes to a chip shortage possibility. What if they actually couldn't take advantage of all of the production lines and all of their contracts so even if they could free up the space they don't have the semiconductors and the parts available in mass quantities for Nintendo Switch 2 so they continue the, with the old Nintendo Switches and also the profit margins are going to be great on the old Nintendo Switch. They already are now better than they were five years ago. Even if you wanted to be much safer, though, 
I truly believe that calling Nintendo Switch an eventual 160 million selling console is a pretty safe bet. Then I asked people on Twitter, how much do you think Nintendo Switch will sell at the end of its incredible run? Let's find out. So this poll is fairly new, but so far with 66 votes, we've got 37.9% of the people saying 145 to 153 million, 42.4% of the people saying 154 to 162 million. So that first group thinks it'll just fall short of Nintendo DS or PlayStation 2. That second group think it'll barely beat one or possibly barely beat both. The third group at 12.1% says 163 to 179 million. That's a pretty big stretch. And then there are 7.6 people out there that are kind of in my mindset of it could do, I think it will do, 180 to 210 million. Now maybe only a couple people think it would be 210. I gave it kind of a wide gap, right? This last gap is... 30 million between 180 and 210 so maybe realistically some of the people are like yeah like 182 not 210 but that's the category because uh that's what twitter gave gave a option for four you know and then i asked some people and stuff like that what they think and we've got some comments in the comment section below so that's going to be fun to go through later but anyways whew, that was a lot of fun this is video game sales with paul gale network thank you for watching the video became a little longer than normal because we went from Matt Pescatella's NPD breakdown for the month and also my own extended thoughts on where I think Nintendo is going to be with the Nintendo Switch a few years down the line and some of my more advanced reasoning trying to elaborate more on why do I keep saying this 210 thing everywhere on forums on my videos, on my site, making this kind of wild claim for the last several years. Now you know. Some of you already knew before because you've been watching this, but I might actually even uh, break this video into two parts, one fully released part and one part just on this last uh, portion because some people might, you know, already have that NPD stuff down. They don't want to wait till the end to find out these 210 million selling uh, thoughts and they just kind of want to get to that part and they might have missed it otherwise so yeah i might do that all right thanks for watching whether you stayed to the end fast forwarded watched the whole video or both or whatever i appreciate it have a good one and i'll see you all next time for more video game sales news talk unboxing videos etc if you'd consider liking subscribing I'd appreciate it. Hit the notification bell if you want to get my videos on time. And, you know, your responses are always appreciated. And I look forward to conversating with you back and forth, whether it's on my site, YouTube, or Twitter. All right. Take it easy. See you all next time. Bye.